how are you there for a friend who's going through a rock bottom that they caused? Are recording up in this mug. Hey, All right, cool are beans. you gonna press the button? No, we've already talked about this. That oh, the button, button has been pressed. The, bu the button has not been pressed, and we're not gonna press a button. So, is there music playing right now? There's music playing right now. <laughs> what kind of music? I don't know. Hey, we need some 90s. 90s jam. Uh, but, uh, will we have copyright? We'll have copyright. So you have to uh, act like you have 90s. Some Breaking jams. Benjamin over oh, this. That's a good life right there. That's a, it's a good jam, but that won't we, uh, sound right. We like to enjoy. Uh, 90s music. We do. Millennials. Even though Breaking Benjamin kind of got famous in 2000, but we won't talk about that. All right. That's moving okay. forward. Uh, so what up, prolific podcast? Super excited for uh, today's episode. Uh, it is our honor uh, to have the Christopher Schuetz on with us today. Uh, I have known him for now pushing 12 years-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yes. I just turned 30 and you're 30. about to turn 30. So yeah, welcome to the Dirty 30 Club, my friend. Um, mm. It's fun. Uh, so I've known you since I was 18. You were 17 at the at that point. The youngest one. You were the youngest yeah. little melon in the ministry school. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny because you got a book for that. I remember I that. I did. Yeah. Was... Were you guys not in the same year? No. no, we were the same year. He was just same the youngest year. one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I've known you, known you since you were 17, since I was 18 and uh, went through 24-7 and then which is the college, ministry school based, yeah it's the yep. ministry school and all that stuff and uh Slash yeah cult. right in the middle what? you should have oh my gosh oh <laughs> come my on you gosh. know i had to no you, you know don't have to. to oh my gosh it's <laughs> fun it's fun for me to do it from over here no response no response <laughs> no response can i press the idiot button for alejo um we do do things that we don't tell anybody else about until they go through them but we're not a cult <laughs> <laughs> oh my god people know what they do when they sign up all right moving forward mm, moving on moving on <laughs> All right, so, uh, but yeah, so I've known you since then. Uh, I knew you before you knew your wife. Yes. Yeah, way before then. I remember whenever you and Sarah started to like each other. I remember that moment. Uh, yep. Now we are all neighbors. Uh, we live in a compound. The joke is, uh, so it's, it's yeah, it's awesome. I mean, they, it's kind of a joke, but it's and, not. That's um, kinda, yeah. But just, yeah, yeah, we live, live next to a bunch of friends. We have, what, how many children in the compound? Holy cow. Uh, three, 12, one, two, 12, 12, 17, uh, four, three eight, half, nine, no, just nine, just there with our kids. Just nine, yeah. nine under five. And then with Nate, we have 12 or yeah. 11. And that's, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. so lots of kids, lots of laughter, lots of chaos. Crying. And yeah. Lots of crying. Lots of that's my toy. Um, yeah. Lots of that. <laughs> lots uh, of tackling. <laughs> yeah. Lots of tattling and tackling. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so that's a whole nother part of our story that we might end up having a conversation about. Uh, but today what we want to talk about, uh, if we may have the honor to talk to the Christopher Schuetz, uh, truly, I, I love doing intros personally for a lot of people because I just, I just, I love talking about them because half the time they don't get talked about. You're like, about. do I shoot? So, uh, you're like, he's like, do, do I shoot? shoot? Mm -hmm. Christopher! Christopher! Schultz. Walks in, walks out, walks in, walks out. <laughs> uh, but no, seriously, man, I'm, I've, I've been blessed to know you. I've been blessed to walk with you through the highs and the lows. I've been blessed to walk through ministry school. You and I did not like each other initially. No, no, we hit each other, yeah, I think. We, we oh, you guys pretty, too? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Most of my best it's friends, best, we did not yeah, like each other. Friendships. Yeah, what? Yeah. I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah, we... So, so tell yeah. me about that. Tell me, what did, what did you hit Joey? Was, I think it was just the personality we had. <laughs> yeah. Our personality was so close. Similar. Mm -hmm. You just... You just I just want to murder heads. you. You're like, there can only be one me. 100%. <laughs> which is great nowadays, because now I know that if I'm butting heads with somebody... I'm yeah. probably going to be great friends yeah. with them later. Oh, yeah. It takes a little bit. So. It takes a little bit. You're like, if I can get over this hump, yeah. maybe we're going to be best friends. Correct. <laughs> That's, funny. So. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we became best friends um, at probably probably Mount LeConte. It's probably uh, yes. whenever we really got to like... 100%. Genuinely like... I love how Joey to to know knows like exactly when he like... When his like friendship sparked. 
No, I would know? agree. I think I, I agree with that because yeah. I remember it too. We were sitting on uh, Tell a, me about fire, this, yeah. mm -hmm. a fireplace, fireplace. Yep. at the stone, they had like a stone were you guys foundation holding thing. Hands? Uh, uh, no, we were just staring at each other for a funny picture because <laughs> yeah. somebody was going around taking yeah, pictures of us. Yeah, I don't remember us. what it was, yeah. yeah. And uh, that made it worse, by the way. Sorry, did it? <laughs> Sorry I just wanted to, wanted to get it closer to your mouth. Okay. <laughs> His you ear now is talking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, I was. Just, just, uh, yeah, fireplace. Yep. Fireplace. Yep. Yep. But it was it was the awkward friendship. Like it was mm -hmm. the like I'm not sure if we're gonna be friends yet. Oh, okay. But we'll just see how this plays out. So what sparked? So what? What was the? The oh, moment well, was at our that conversation. Time, at that time, we already went through climbing mountains. We already went through all the games and all the stuff, building yeah. cardboard box, like all that stuff. And I think like through that time, for me, I remember seeing who you were. I saw how you handled things, like stuff like that. And so like, especially during that time, there was a lot of stuff you saw where a lot of people were at. And so you kind of like... I don't know, you just kind of decide the people you want to hang around. I mean, I think we played pool a couple times, yeah. ping pong. Like, I think it was just like, there were certain people that I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't like, you know, I'll, I'll hang around you, you know, like, uh, like, let me see. Cause at that time I knew the only person I knew at the ministry school was Sean. That was the only person yeah. I knew. Yeah. Everyone else, I didn't have a clue who they were. So like, like I knew I had a best friend there, but in reality I was like, I really, I gotta kind of get to know some of these other first mm -hmm. years you know and i remember mount lacan was like that time that i was like all right let me I would agree yeah let me let me see so yeah very cool but yeah they didn't like each other not at all no no <laughs> not at all. so we are neighbors now we We're, are we do live next yeah. to each other now no, we, we didn't each other like every each other. single day yeah, we hate each other and uh now our kids play together we take our trash cans back to the <laughs> we do without and... even having to say anything yeah. it's just a it's the... one day it will happen for me it's fine but I yeah, yours is too long. That's, yeah, uh, yeah. You gotta do That's, your own trash. You, you got a couple more steps. <laughs> Not walking a mile for you, baby. So. <laughs> Walk a mile in my shoes, gosh dang it. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but no, it's super exciting. And I, I'm looking forward to talking to you today, bro, about obviously, you know, um, you know, you said you've gone through ups and downs yeah, and all these different yeah, yeah, things. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you have a um, beautiful family mm -hmm. with uh, a beautiful wife and children uh that my family love um i think i think my son thinks your your son asher is like the coolest person in the entire world in fact he versa. calls us asher uh uh Stop it. oh yeah oh, sure like he'll just be like he'll be hanging out with the, uh, his cousins he'll be like asher i, I mean maverick <laughs> <laughs> so he loves asher but um but many people would look at your life right now and think that it's always been that beautiful right that that um. there's no um there hasn't been uh work that there hasn't there haven't been moments of hopelessness or yeah. you know all that stuff and so um obviously you would disagree with that because we're going to talk a little bit about just like yeah. your story with with your wife and what i love about your story bro like my favorite thing about your story is that and it's kind of similar to roberto's story uh that we had on our podcast is i think christian the christian world um undersells redemption uh -huh. right the Christian world loves salvation and, you know, people going from like their old life to the new life. But we hear very little about how to be rede uh, redeemed as a Christian in the church. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, that's like something that we don't even know how to touch. Like, oh, you knew Christ and something happened. And how do you come back from that? Mm -hmm. Right. And I think a lot of, I, I dare to say, just from what I've heard, I think a lot of Christians who either fall once or multiple times, mm -hmm. And maybe they want to get back up and they want to get back to a place where they can live this Christian life the way they were intended to, that they actually leave because they, they don't feel that support in the church and they feel like there's no getting back up in the church. Uh -huh. So can you share with me and us a little bit about, uh, you don't have to share all the all the details, just not because you, you don't care sharing, but I know we don't have a whole lot of time. Sure. I want to focus sure. today um, with you on talking about uh, redemption in the church and what that looked like for you, the hard yeah. parts, the easy parts. Um, and I have a friend of yours that was with you through that time. Yeah, which I'm very excited to get his his side of the story. It's ah, almost like, cool. you know, cool. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John type. Yeah, He saw a different type of, of view, but... So give us give us a synopsis of what happened. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then after that, let's move on to kind of what that felt like after. Yeah, sure. So um, I, I don't, I don't talk very often, right? So I, I do think a lot and I also listen to people <laughs> a lot. So, um, but I'm going to do my best here. So 
Um, I'll just put that right there. <laughs> um, so I met my wife, uh, Sarah, uh, through this college and, um, in the college, right. We were, we were actually one of the first couples to date. Um, mm-hmm. that's kind of a big thing about it, right? When mm-hmm. we first started, they were like, no dating. This is a right. You and Jesus year, mm-hmm. no dating. Mm-hmm. Um, which then was we, it all years or was it just the first it was, year? It was mainly targeted. Was, the first years was mainly the, main the first target. year, yeah. but okay. uh, it was, it was more of a challenge then to mm-hmm. like, you know, help us mm-hmm. lead Focus. us, mm-hmm. lead us in how, what dating should look like. Right. So, um, but we started dating in our third year. Um, I'm like, all right, I'm going to marry this girl. So mm. long story short, I get down on my knee and, mm. and we were at the mountains and it was beautiful. Can't top it. It was like, come on. I'm not even 21. <laughs> and, um, and we're engaged and we're having a blast. She's planning the wedding. And, um, and I am working through things in my life that I didn't really know that <laughs> I should be working on which i'm sure you were not the only person in ministry school working through sure. those things you were no, just what are you talking about we were all the, so perfect the only one that's that why was you go to ministry engaged, school 100%. Yeah. yeah well and well so, actually one reality you started dating in second year not third year right i, I think, believe i thought we you started, started dating. i think we started dating our first year yes yes you did your yeah, first we started year? dating we started your first dating year, year. That's went through your second the year 24 well, no, that's, that's actually why it was such a big deal um and then your third the year is when you were engaged because right. it was just in the beginning of your third year at, right. up in the mountains yep. oh yeah. so i'm sure yeah. when things hit the fan i'm sure there were somebody i wasn't even there i'm sure someone said this is why first year should not Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. probably. But I never heard that. Yeah, that actually was one of the few things I never heard. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> yeah. it was so far. Just, it was two years was past say. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, but no, we're planning this wedding, and again, as uh, as you go through life, you, you make mistakes, and I made a mistake, mm. and it was a big mistake, um, one that cost me months and months, years of coming back to afterwards, and the mistake only cost me five minutes of my time. That's the crazy part about it, too. Mm. As Five most mistakes are minutes. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, everybody, you know, well, it was years of whatever you're going through built mm-hmm. up, right? And so, um, so through that, Sarah learned of it. My wife's learned of it, and um, and we end up breaking off our engagement, right? So that's the awkward. We sent out invites already, so it's the, yep. hey Bob, hey Sally, mm-hmm. that's hard. Sorry, no wedding, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Who did that? Um, I know I, you did. I, it. You did ninety percent of it. I remember that. <laughs> I can't remember that either. Yeah. <laughs> so we were just talking before the camera started that some of this has been so painful for Chris that he it, you almost have blacked out, forgotten it. Mm. Correct. Um, and I also think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like some parts of our um, old life, our sinful life, also kind of get forgotten because we, because God does such a work in us. Correct. It was, too, it was a remaking, like, a renewing, right? Renewing of your mind. Yeah. It's a whole, I mean, when you say renew, you're not just turning a 180 mm-hmm. it, it, it it's gone mm-hmm. right so i mean very short when you're looking at pornography right it's images you're you're blinking so even if you're looking at these images and then you're done with them you still have these images in your mind mm-hmm. right it's a renewing it's a you're getting rid of it's almost mm-hmm. like shredding paper you're getting rid of these images yeah. right so um but there are there's some memories that i'm like i i look back at some pictures and i'm like i don't remember going through that i know wow. i went through that I have no idea how I got through that, even though you know it's mm-hmm. your relationship with Jesus is the only way that True. you got through yeah. it. Um, but um, so we ended our engagement. We broke up and um, part of- You got kicked out of the ministry school? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So knowing I've, I've been around this ministry school for a long time, so I've known some people who have been let go, kicked mm-hmm. out, right? And I know why they, and and so then I look at what I did and I'm like, that doesn't even compare. Like, why am I being let go? I feel like you should be like, bring me in even more, mm-hmm. like help me through this. Right. And, mm-hmm. um, and so again, I'm, I'm let go and in, in a ministry school, they kick you out. Mm-hmm. Like can't get much worse than being kicked out of a ministry school. Right. Put that on my resume. <laughs> and so, um, I mean, I also know a friend that got kicked out of ministry school for, Sending and sync lyrics to a girl that he liked. Yes. Well, that well, wasn't a ministry school. That that was a college. That was a that was a that was a Bible school. That's different yeah. than a ministry school. So, <laughs> different story. But um, but we'll get to the 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 good stuff. Is right. Punchline. It's, <laughs> it's the it's the not talking with her for 
a year, year and a half. There's yep. like no communication. And um, so who established that? Her or the school or? Uh, it was kind of an all around, right? Like the right thing. She, right. Like it was, it was for me, I'm looking at it like I don't want to do this, but I knew it was necessary. Like I, if I want to get through whatever I'm needing to get through, I need to just focus on self. Right. Yeah. And so what was scary about that was the unknown. Like I love this girl so much mm -hmm. and yes, I made a mistake, but I'm going to do whatever I can to correct it because I want to spend my life with her. <clears throat> and so in doing so and, and wanting that I have to now let go of what could be your Isaac. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And now focus on me to better mm -hmm. myself to maybe what could be. Mm. Um, and it Although was the, it could not be right. While you're and you away. have to, yep. and that's the unknown. That's mm -hmm. the stepping out of it and going, all right, God, there you go. Right. And so, um, which I'm really excited to get your talk, your, your take about this. Um, just seeing this view of, of it, but, um, but just working on myself and long nights and crying and mm. going to get a job that I don't like because I just need to make money and live and, 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 and reinvent a new life outside of oh, the ministry of school, school and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, um, and then going through that, right. You, you try to connect with the church. You try to go mm -hmm. back to it. One of the things that I was, I was always pushing myself every day was this isn't going to push me away from Jesus. This is going to pull me in even more. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm going to church. Like I went to mm -hmm. church on days where the church was closed. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to find a door that's open, even if mm -hmm. nobody's here and just go inside because mm -hmm. I need to be here. Mm -hmm. Right. So did you, did you always have that posture after everything kind of blew up or did you have a season of it where you were bitter, angry, not coming back? Um, no, I, no, I was always, I never had the bitter, angry. I had, I had the frustrating, like, I don't understand. I don't understand what's happening or, or what I'm having to go through. That was, it was more frustrating. I wasn't, I wasn't angry at anybody. I wasn't angry at Jesus. I wasn't angry at the, the school the leaders, the leaders, right? Like, like I, I'm always putting myself in their shoes too. Like, okay, so they have to know what's best for me or they have to be looking out for my best interest. Mm -hmm. And so I have to trust that them letting me go from this school mm -hmm. is in my best interest, mm -hmm. even if I don't see it mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> and at, at the time, I'm like, I'm a kid. Like, I don't know what's happening. But Lord, you do. And I'm just going to do what you want me to do and just keep walking day by day. Mm -hmm. All right. So, but I was always involving him. Mm -hmm. I was, like I said, I was going to the church and I would just literally go sit in a stairwell. <laughs> Which, by the way, for people that don't know this, the ministry school that they attended was rent at the church that they attended as yes. well. So, mm -hmm. so it's not, so it, it also had this factor of you got kicked out of the school, but it was a church thing as well. Like Correct. your church family was affected in this mm -hmm. way. And so, Correct. so, so you were mentioning to me that even going back to church was tough. So tell me about that. Yeah. Cause even, um, so I would just, I would go back to church and I would get a text message during service. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, I can't believe you're here right now. Mm hmm and I didn't know how to react at first. I'm like, mm -hmm. like, is this person like saying like, I'm glad you're here right now or, or like, get out. Yeah. why are you here? Oh, and you of course shouldn't. the devil, the devil will help you read that text, right? Oh, hundred percent. That's I'm like. I cannot believe like, okay, you're okay, here right, right now. There's, there's a lot you're of like, commas. <laughs> right. <You know? laughs> there's no commas like, in this when I'm at the person is like, man, I can't believe you're here right, right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I just, I'm like, okay. So I, I don't like, I remember I didn't even respond. I'm like, I'm just not even going to respond to it. Right. And, um, but I'd have conversations with, uh, the leaders that let me go. Like I would, I would see them out in the lobby. So obviously I'm not, I'm going to say hi. Right. I had a great mentor during the time. Mm. Um, it literally just in that moment, I knew that I was supposed to meet with this guy mm -hmm. and I called him and I said, Hey, the Lord wants me to sit down with you. Mm -hmm. And I know that we kind of just know each other from passing, but I'm supposed to sit with you. And he was like, I'll give you a shot, right? Mm -hmm. 
Sure. If the Lord's telling he you, knew, let's do he it. He knew right? about uh, uh, I don't not, know if he knew in the much. beginning. Not he much. didn't okay. know much. So, yeah. right. And that's like a four hour conversation we had at Starbucks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And since that, like, since then, mm-hmm. he walked me through the whole entire mm-hmm. process, right? It mm-hmm. was, and I remember that conversation where he was just telling me, listen, a lot of the times you want to fix the thing. You want to use your tools that you've learned that you're trying to do it and try to fix it yourself. Well, right mm-hmm. now you need to put up your toolbox, put your toolbox away and let God handle it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, um, it was, there's a lot of, I'm, I'm like starting to get some, starting to remember a little bit of it, just some small little details. Um, I remember going, like I said, going to the job that I did not like and I would just start crying at the desk. Mm-hmm while making cold calls to these people and having to <laughs> do you want to buy a roof i got i gotta go <laughs> and i'd walk out and like go out go outside and go to the woods and just ball my eyes out mm-hmm. that was 10 years just, ago man yeah I just years ago, so he, was, he was selling signs was his first that's sign. it yeah he was selling yep. signs yep i um i can only imagine man how um you know i was sharing with you um one one of the difficult things about being in the church for a long time is that you see the good and the bad, right? Huh. And it's it's not a bad thing per se, because because I think too like people can have this idealistic way of looking at the church like it's meant to be a perfect place, yep. you know, and, yep. and it's just not right. right. Like, and when you mature mature in God, and you recognize like these people have as many issues as I do, yep. then we can all like realize like okay we're all just here bearing each other's issues right um but i can only imagine how hard well let me say this right because we've talked about this here on this podcast many times we've talked about pornography Uh now we dealt with this stuff while we were Mm -hmm. doing ministry we dealt with it while we were ordained Mm -hmm. oh yeah and um and there are just some people that get found out and some others that don't Mm -hmm. sure right that so if, if every if every um, man in church that watches porn got found out, we have very few families sure. in the church, right? Yep. Um, and and so on, right? And so anyway, what I was gonna uh, ask you is, um, how lonely was it, bro? You know, you have and so let me paint the picture and you tell me. Sure. I imagine because I had maybe a little bit of a similar experience away, not not ministry school, but I had buddies, dudes that I, I walked with. Um, that's my, my spiritual family. Right? Uh-huh. So you're walking with these people every day, spending an extraordinary, extraordinary amount of time with them yep. when you're in ministry school because you guys are eating together, doing sports together. You're yep. waking up early together, going to pray together. You're doing ministry together. You are going on trips together. Like it's your entire life, yep. right? And uh, there are rules and there are expectations and standards and then you don't meet them, it blows up. And then what happened with those relationships? Like, what yeah. did that look like? Yeah. If you can just kind of like remember a little bit and walk me through. Yeah. Um, I remember, um, I remember sitting in a room with all these guys walked in and they were just kind of there to just be there when I was mm. let go. Right. Mm. And then, um, I remember leaving and, uh, I can't remember where we went, but we went, somewhere and we sat on a couch <laughs> and i could i could tell you where if you want <laughs> yeah i was about to say he could probably fill you in on this part but yeah um i remember joey showing up and uh a guy christian roman and mm-hmm. they just came over and just sat with me it was like a it was a job moment right like joe went through everything mm-hmm. everything was taken away from him and just sitting by the fire <laughs> Mm. naked and his friends come over <laughs> and just Luckily, sit down with naked. them naked obviously naked? they did not come over and sit down with me naked a weird couch. that would definitely naked be weird spiritually <laughs> soul wise um, <laughs> even though again it wasn't weird back then I guess well maybe it turns <laughs> out what do we do I don't know let's get naked with us. let's get naked let's really lay it out <laughs> so, here in Job <laughs> so, but they did they just they came over and I remember them just sitting on either side of me and we just sat there no and, no, not a whole lot and, of talking and I just I just mm. cried mm. I just cried mm. um because it was official, you were kicked out. Oh yeah. yeah, that was that day. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a like there was just so much emotion mm-hmm. going on. Like I, I just based I lost. It felt like I lost the love of my life. Minister school was something I felt like mm-hmm. I was. I was heading down. Like we're gonna mm-hmm. come on, God, right? So kicked out of minister school. Like what's next? I got. No, I have no job. Like mm-hmm. leadership roles. Like, like the roles that. Did you feel some like you lost your on. friends too? 
Um, to an extent, I mean, I, I I'm not saying a I'm little, not, a little bit, I think, yeah. but I, I, maybe again, you didn't. I think it was, didn't, that's okay. it was different having Joey and Christian on either mm-hmm. side. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the the lonely night, the lonely parts were the nights. Mm-hmm. It was it was the nights of just laying in bed, and I just I remember I like I didn't sleep. There were some times I couldn't even sleep in bed. I had to lay on the floor, and mm-hmm. just it, it was almost like not punishing myself, but mm-hmm. like I need to be uncomfortable just to get to sleep. Mm. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, sure. I, I need to get out of my comfort in order just there, to yeah. go to sleep. Or you're normal. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm. so that was, but I, I remember just friendship and knowing, okay, these, these guys are here. They don't need to say anything, but mm. just to have them here. Um, I think there were even some times where I would call you guys, mm. Hey, I just need you to come over. Mm-hmm. I don't know what we're going to do. Yep. I just need you to come over and yep. I need you to sit at this table with me yep. mm. and just sit here. Mm. Or we'd come by mm. and just pick you up. Yep. Mm. yep. So let me ask you a question, Jerry. Mm. How did, I mean, and I, I'm asking because I'm curious. I don't know the answer to this. Mm-hmm. I'm genuinely curious. How are you there for a friend who's going through a rock bottom that they caused? Right? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you, and I'm going to, I'm going to make the question very specific. Like, how do you, love them with grace mm-hmm. while also not agreeing with what they've done? Mm-hmm. How do you do that? How did you do that? Did you do it right? Did you do it wrong? Did you do it right? Um, so I, I know I had parts that maybe I did it well, but I know I had parts that I probably did it poorly. Um, I know one of the first things, cause I remember that moment. I remember being brought in actually before all of like the second year team, third year team, um, was told. Yes. Um, and I remember being told like, Hey, something happened. Uh, Chris is being, you know, removed. Um, and like, like did you he, see it coming i was about to say no. how did you feel during that like no. when they were telling you you're like were you like oh my gosh oh yeah what did oh, this yeah. idiot do uh, yeah well my first thing was i actually felt in the fact of i was like man like what did i miss because mm. i was your accountability partner mm. um and there was four of us at the time that's no three of us yeah i was roman myself and you were really like accountability partners in that time frame and so my first thought was like what did i miss Mm -hmm. like what was i blind to which by the way if you're not familiar an accountability partner is a christian um uh, it's something that it's something that sometimes christians do to kind of pair up and help each other just um, overcome flee stuff. from yeah. I don't even know yeah. if I'd say it's a Christian thing. Yeah, like no, just, accountability is a, is like a but worldly this, but aspect. the statement accountability in this partner. Aspect, though, yeah, in this aspect. Sure. Like yeah. I, I've never heard anybody say accountability partner oh, really? other than Christians. I have. Oh, accountability have. partner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've heard yeah. gym people. I've yeah. heard. Yeah, I've heard yeah. business yeah. owners. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's now but in the way that sure. Yeah, sure. yeah. In in the terminology. I digress. But in that moment, particularly, I remember they pulled Roman and I in and just had a brief conversation and if i can like put myself back in it and um and then everyone then the other third years came in had a conversation like hey he's been removed um and then uh if i remember correctly pastor john said um you can go over to uh if i remember correctly it was at Palmy's house um, yeah. and, uh, either Palm you or, um, another, another leader's house. I, but I think it was Palm you. And it's like, you can go over there. Like, like if you want, um, uh, to Christian and I, so we, we hopped in the car and drove and Christian and I remember on the drive, like him and I were quiet, but we were just like, like my heart in that moment more than anything was just broken because like twofold was what did I miss? And then fully at the extent, like what did, what happened? 
because I didn't even know to the full extent mm -hmm. what actually happened. So it was like, you know, again, we've heard, we both have yeah. been around when people have just been removed or like things like chaos. And it was like really, really serious. Yep. And so we got a little bit more details before because we started asking some questions in that meeting. But then on the way, Christian and I both were just like, I remember like we were just like praying for you and asking for wisdom from the Lord. And like, God, like give us wisdom when we need to speak grace, if we need to speak truth. Um, and at that, like we didn't know the state that you were in, if you were in pride, Mm. or if you were in humility like we didn't know um we didn't know if you were like like in the point of like brokenness and like wanting to change or yes. in the point of like whatever i'm fine like we je we just didn't know and so i remember like driving there just like man like talking to christian like what did we miss like how did we miss this like were the things like we should have been praying for we should have been checking up on each other more like mm. like these things and uh, because again you go through seasons we're like oh we're good you know, like we're all right. We, we kind of all know that we're struggling with things, but it's like, you know, if it really, really gets rough, you know, one of us will, you know, talk to each other or whatever. Yep. And, um, and so, but I, but I remember that. I remember that particularly driving there. I remember sitting yeah, at the fireplace. I remember walking in and giving you a hug um, with tears in our eyes. Like I, like I remember that because like you said, ministry school was something, particularly all three of us were really, really passionate in like pursuing and yep. like wanting to become part of leadership in that place and yep. like development and that stuff. And we all had goals in it and dreams in it. And so to like watch a brother be removed from it because of a decision um and like you know you, you always would make the statements of like oh yeah if you know it, it would happen to that guy not one of us yep you know or like ah it wouldn't happen to me or like things like that and so to watch it happen to someone that i was rubbing shoulders with mm -hmm. like literally one of my best friends um to watch it just like spiral i was just like i was caught in the like i don't know what the heck just happened yeah. um and and again, there's so many more things into that, like into the school leadership and like things like that. But, but tell um, me about how you did. Yeah. So, I mean, in reality, one of the first things I did was I really wanted to see where his heart was at, like mm -hmm. genuinely, like, where are you? Um, and I remember like just asking like some, some prompting questions in that moment, even though being quiet, but just like asking like, like, where are you? Like, what's first off, how's your soul? Like, where, like, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Because I remember how heavy it was. And that's the thing, I believe the Lord gives discernment. So I remember walking in the house and, and like I felt the heaviness. So I kind of like already knew that it was, because you were the only one there. Yep. And so, so like there was no one else in that house. And so, yep. I, but I remember catching like just the spirit in that place was like, no, I think he knows that he did wrong. Yep. Like, I think he knows that. So, and I think he's, he's in that understanding. And so, um, yeah, I, I remember having that moment and that conversation and, um, uh, Christian, I just, do you feel like him knowing made it easier for you to be there for him? Oh yeah. Yeah. Because in the, in the time and the place he knew what he did was wrong, not to the extent of what it was and to the extent of like where he decided to repent and blah, 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 blah. That's not up to me. Now the 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 spot was where your heart was at. Like, mm -hmm. do you know what's wrong? Yeah. Do you not want to do that again? Yeah. Or do you want to fully focus on Jesus and get right no matter the cost? Yeah. Okay. Let's move forward. Like there's there's those placements, like some major benchmarks, like more than that, but there's some major benchmarks in anyone that I feel like that decides to uh really in reality, this sin gets the hold of the best of us mm -hmm. and and we fall. Um in reality is Which like I think where, where's your heart at? In that right. moment, right? Like, and, and again, the heart, the heart aspect, I would call it this way. Where is your soul and your spirit? Is like, and in that moment, I truly, truly believe Chris wanted, he, he was done. He's like, this is wrong. I should have never done it. I like, I don't want anything to do with it. Whatever it takes. I remember yeah. you saying that. Whatever it takes for me to get back. Whatever it takes for me to heal. Whatever it takes for me to get. Because, because I don't even think at that point, I don't think you guys called everything off just yet. No. I believe the no, first is, day was a removal of leadership correct. and a removal of Bayside College at 24 seven. And then at that time, I think it was like within a couple of days correct. was whenever you guys decided to split. Yep. And, and I remember that moment mm -hmm. as well, at least enough. Um, and those moments more than anything mm -hmm. is the hearing and also knowing your friend, like he mentioned in the very beginning that he's not a big like talker. So like, like understanding that my friend thinks a lot and like I process a lot and he processes even more that I know I actually need to get him out of processing 
because I know he's going to process himself to death because I, I know he wanted to change. So all he's processing is what did I do and how could I have done it better? Why did I, why am I now separate? Why am I like, I, oh, well, is she really going to like, oh, well, wait, I've heard that she might like, so uh, like, and just. Well, it's uh, you're playing the what if game. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, I did this. What if, what if this happens? Mm -hmm. What if that happens? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, what's, what's next? What do right. I need to do? Right. Is there something I need to do? Because I remember you asking about like, do you think I'm even going to be welcome back at Bayside? Yeah. And I looked at you, I was like, dude, if someone says something to your face, I will. Uh, like, I remember Christian and I like, dude, I'll knock some people out. Yep. And I was like, well, what about college? Like, how do you think people are going to think? I was like, I don't care about how they think about you. Like, it's yep. not about them. Yep. Like, it's literally just about, it's about your soul and where you're at. Like, yep. I care more about your relationship here than your relationship here. And you and know that's, what's interesting yeah, about yeah. that, bro, is that I feel like, um, a lot of people, um, like obviously the enemy knows how to use shame really well, uh -huh. like, right? Like he just, that's like one of his tools of choice, like for a lot of people, yep. right? And he knows how to wield it very good and he knows how to use it to separate you from things that are actually going to help you. Correct. Right? So there's help, there's medicine, there's a, a doctor per se, and I'm gonna separate you from that solution as much as I can with shame, right? And so, um, it's interesting to hear you say, to hear Joey say that you even asked that, yourself that question: Am I even going to be welcome back? Because I think that in the in the church, when people fall, that question is perhaps what keeps them from actually being redeemed. In general, well, yeah, and, and right? what's, like, what's interesting too is not just the question wasn't just asked because oh, am I going to be welcomed back? Because again, there's there's a lot of underlining things that like it's really hard to explain. Like regarding twenty four seven, like we were the third years and we weren't just third year leaders, but we were like leaders within the church. We were leaders within positions that we taught stuff and we trained people and we Correct. were leaders in ministries and like Correct. all of these places that like, so there was, there's more tying to just Chris being removed from a ministry school aspect. It, it, it's tied to leadership roles within the church and within events and within like, there's so much more and not just that, but like how many relationships you had which even then, in there, which then I, I look back and I think like, okay, well then that was just, that was a, that was a thing on me. That was a, that was a prideful, mm -hmm. I deserve the positions mm -hmm. I deserve. Right. And, and it's the, now what, like, do I, mm -hmm. do I get anything? Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's, do you think that at some point it, you asked, do you think that at some point the positions were more important than the healing in the Chris? Oh, hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Cause that's the, cause it was in that time. I mean, this is when, like right, mega churches were just mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Ooh, let's I say, talk about I say this. blowing up, right? Like just mm -hmm. growing mm -hmm. and growing. You're like, oh, this is the next best mm -hmm. thing. I gotta, I have to plan a church. I've got to wear the skinny jeans. I just mm -hmm. skinny jeans. I gotta wear the shoes. I gotta be I gotta, positionally gotta, right mm -hmm. here, correct, mm -hmm. so I can lead people. And then you know, you got the people who are trying to bring you up, and they're like, well, you can't lead until you're 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. Jesus was 30 when he started mm -hmm. his ministry. Like, yep. But what about? young adults like what about mm -hmm. young people where it talks about young people leading mm -hmm. like i'm a young person like let's yeah. just start like right so it's mm -hmm. there was a lot of pride mm -hmm. there's a lot of mm -hmm. pride and so can i ask a yeah, question about and that's that? and that's a minister's class we talked about that you and i were in one one of the yeah. arc things you're one of the people that i remember uh if you remember this moment i think it was our first year uh that we were sitting in arc um which is association of related churches and it was where i think there was probably 12 or 15 ministry schools at the time that were all yep. there to serve uh churches and pastors yep. um and i remember after we do a big setup day getting prepared for them and i've shared this story before um that there was i believe there's three or four of us that were all sitting there and and uh, one of the people, I, I'm, again, I don't need to share what ministry school, but I just remember this moment that they're up in the plat right in the front and they go um, right pretty much right in the beginning. Hey, so excited. Yeah, 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 yeah. And made a joke. But there was, it was like, man, let's give God some glory. It was like good loud. And then it was like a joke of like, who's ready to get hired? And it just uproared. Like everyone's like, ah, oh, yeah, like made it really loud. And I remember you, me, and one other person just kind of like, just looking at everyone. There's only a few of us in like 24 seven that didn't like really respond. Just kind of yeah. looked at everyone and was like, yeah. I'm not here for that. Correct. And, and it was like, but Art then at was the like same the time, I feel like stones. I'm hearing you say though, that, and, and, I, and I am interested in that, Chris, because yeah. I feel like, I, I feel like the only way Christian leadership and sin can cohabit, cohabitate, Cohabit, cohabitate. Cohabitate. Yeah. 
I just don't know where you're going with this. So. Either. Christian leadership and cohabitation and incident cohabitate is when the heart of the person is more focused on what they do than who they are. Correct. Right? Yep. And so, so you're able to manage your sin while you hold a position. Yeah. Right? And you lose, and we lose, because this has happened to me too, you lose that purity of heart towards the Lord. Yep. That is precisely what keeps you away from sin. Mm -hmm. It's right. that loyal heart towards right. him, right? So I'm not surprised to hear you say, like, yeah, I was wondering, like, those positions, like, am I going to have any of them? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you just you just made a mistake that could cost you the love of your life. Yep. And, like, those positions were, like, still something you were considering oh, yeah. and I thinking mean, about. You know? Well, because remember, was, that was the first thing that was removed, though, too. <clears throat> like, that correct. was, it wasn't, it wasn't we that, We didn't have like, the conversation of breaking yeah. off our engagement either. But that yeah. was still the what yeah. if. Like, oh, my yeah. God, she just found out. Like, we're mm -hmm. done. Mm, right. She's never going to want to talk to me ever again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And so even to get into that, I remember mm -hmm. sitting down with her and our pastors at the time. Yeah. And even then she sat down and said, I love you. We need to break mm -hmm. this off, but mm -hmm. I love you. Wow. And I need you to get through whatever mm -hmm. you need to get through. Yeah. Wow. Sarah said that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's yeah. powerful. Right. Yeah. I'm like, you are who I'm supposed to marry mm -hmm. <laughs> right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like that was, can that, we not break it off? Can we just still yeah, do this? Like, oh, was, oh, I remember that. It was a simple <laughs> moment, like, yeah. that was, but it was so big. Yeah. Like, people need to understand, like, mm -hmm. that moment, mm -hmm. that was the catalyst for mm -hmm. our whole marriage. Mm -hmm. Knowing yeah. that because of what she just said and who she is right in that mm -hmm. moment, I knew that anything else that we face coming up in our marriage, mm -hmm. which I didn't even know at the time that was going to happen, right? Like, mm -hmm. that wasn't even a question. But now mm -hmm. we look back at that, I'm like, we can get through anything together. Yeah, that's like your ride or die moment. That was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which again, now I'm. I look back, right? Like, I don't even know. Can I say who my mentor was? Is that all that's a, your call? So, so if people know Alan Olson, mm -hmm. um, oh my god, no, <laughs> it was that's a the censor button. That's a censor button. You didn't press it quick enough. Like, oh. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> but Alan used to say, yeah. right? He was he was talking yeah. about. He's like, you need to stop being a person of doing mm -hmm. and start being a person of being. Mm -hmm. Right, that was the biggest thing. I was mm -hmm. a doer. Mm -hmm. What needs yeah. to be done? I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Like talk about a servant. Like mm -hmm. you know the what are the, the what initiative? Are the, uh, yeah. yeah, the. Yeah. But my my like number one at the top of who I am, I was serving. You need mm -hmm. you need me to pick up chairs. Oh, I'm going to pick up as many chairs as I can. Mm -hmm. Want to beat everybody else? <laughs> oh yeah, that's the that's right. That's, that's the a Christian way to pick up. Uh, yeah, chicks. <laughs> uh, hey girl, watch this. I just grabbed ten chairs. See me those ten chairs. <laughs> I line them that's up. That's right. I line uh, them up. Jesus gave me the, that's right. <laughs> right? Like, I line them up on the dots. But serving, that was my that was my serving was I was a doer. Mm -hmm. I need to show everybody that I'm here to serve. Mm -hmm. I need to show everybody, right? It's this complete wrong, wrong wrong mindset, which now you look at me today, I'm like, that's, I am not the first to serve. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not. I'm not I'm not really a server and I'm not compassionate. Not that I don't serve, not that, that I'm not compassionate. He hates everyone. It's just not <laughs> my uh, well you're not a, trying i feel like you're not trying to earn correct um Hundred yeah mm -hmm. and so yeah. it's it's now who who am who am i yeah like right and so um mm. but i remember going through that moment with sarah and uh she was on worship she's worshiping all the time like mm -hmm. every weekend she's on worship mm -hmm. and i remember the time that i was watching her and um mm -hmm. I, I didn't go to services for like the first few weeks. Mm -hmm. I remember watching her because she had to sing the very next weekend mm -hmm. after we broke our engagement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching her lo looking up there. Mm -hmm. The only thing I could think of, where's her ring? Mm -hmm. Is she wearing the ring? Mm -hmm. Is she going to wear the ring? I remember you texting me that. You, I remember you distinctly before service saying, hey, man, can you can you look if she's wearing a ring? Because at that point, you guys were talking. Yeah. And even on top of that, I was the middleman between you and Sarah before you were dating. Yes. And then while you were engaged, and yes. then after it broke off, and I'm the middleman. And like, like because again, Sarah was one of, it's actually, it's really funny. It's like how Christopher and Murari and I, like we were very, very good friends um, uh, prior. And then from there, like stepped in and you guys got to know each other. Because I remember the first time Sarah came up to was like at venue, the young adult service yeah. being like, yeah. I think I like him. How yeah. does, how do I know if he likes me? And I was like, well, or like, like talking through with this. And like, yeah. I remember that. And I remember you texting me that. And then I remember you texting me during service. Yeah. I can't tell. 
Matt, can you be proud? And you're texting me while service is going. And then I'm oh. watching Sarah, right? Because I'm sitting in the front of, front as well, watching Sarah. This, like, the one week she's not holding, the one week she's not raising her hand. She's not raising like, her hand, you know? No. But actually, I do, I do remember, I do remember that service too. But keep, keep going because I want to share yeah. something from yeah, that. So, yeah. So, um, I was just, I was just getting images in my head of like, mm. when you, when you said venue, like, mm. uh, that was part of the redemption, right? Mm -hmm. So I remember asking Alan when, mm -hmm. when we'd sit down. I'm like, what do I do? Like when I see these people, what do mm -hmm. I do when I see her? Like, do I, do I need to walk away from her? Like, I, I don't want, like one of the biggest things that she asked for was she wanted space. Mm -hmm. yeah. So naturally I'm like, sure, I'll give you space, but I'm going to text and reach out to you every single day and ask you how you're doing. Cause I want to, I want to know, I want to be in the know. And I was Cause like, I also don't want to lose you. Correct. And so if I stay away long enough, enough then you might forget about me move on which that's a whole different part of the story Ooh. but right well <laughs> but um i remember going through everything and i remember alan just telling me is like when you see her when you see people you say hi because you're a human being <laughs> i'm like i'm not supposed to Whoa. say hi to you hello <laughs> like, oh, Mark. this guy just <laughs> era, era. Mark, well, I'm like, oh my gosh you're so right i just say hi to people yeah. <laughs> I'm a human being, and that's <laughs> the normal thing. No, but to it's do. still super strange and hard 100%. to. Hundred yeah. percent. What? Yeah. But it's just like that's that's one of the biggest things that I see as Christians and in the church, mm -hmm. we miss it so bad. Like mm -hmm. it's just, oh my gosh, did you hear about that person? Well, I, and I don't I don't want to get into this because it's not my place to say this. Oh, then let's not get into it. No, no, I'm, I'm not going to get into it. He's about to say it. No, 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 I'm not going to say it. But I know that there's like there's, a, the a, there's a bit of betrayal in the story. Um from people that were involved and that you thought were for you in the process. And then. Oh, sure. Yeah. They were you, like, not really you for you. You find out who your friends are. Right. Um, but you also find out the people who are, again, putting myself, I'm always putting myself in people's shoes. Like it's the instant flesh thought, but then I turn it around. I'm like, okay, what could they be thinking through mm -hmm. this moment? Right. And so there's people that went through it and they look at me and go, oh my gosh, I, I can't even talk to him. Not because mm -hmm. of what I did, but because they were scared. Mm, mm -hmm. That's good. And this is very, mm -hmm. this is very real in like the church. I, I don't know how, I don't know, I don't how, know to, what to do. I don't know how, how to, to react. Yeah. Do mm -hmm. it's, it's the, it's, it's with, the robot. What's his name? Adam? Uh, Alan, right? Alan, Alan. Like, like, I don't, what do I do when I see Chris? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do we say hi? Do, can we, can we say hi? Mm -hmm. like, right? I remember that. I remember it's having multiple big... conversations with the third years being like, like, how do we, how do we talk with Chris? How do we pray with him? How do we well, do let these me, things? Let me define and, this here yeah. for a minute, because yeah. I feel like people don't understand, like, especially people in the world don't get why that's so hard for a Christian. Like in the world, you make a mistake and you're like, ah, what's up? No, oh, and hey, I did. You killed I did. it. So, so through this, right? Like there were some people, like some mm -hmm. families that were mm -hmm. like, that's all you did. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what you did. I, so like, like I, I did that last week. Mm-hmm. Well, you did. I did that last week. We're still here. Like, which doesn't make it right. Correct. No. But I think we also have this in the Christian world. We have this like, and I can't blame us. I can't blame us because, because we are constantly being told friendship with the world mm -hmm. is being an enemy of God. Right. Yep. And we're constantly having to figure out. So what does it mean to be a friend mm -hmm. with the world? Yep. Mm -hmm. Does it mean to be a friend with the world? That if you're doing the wrong thing, then how am I your friend? How, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. am, am I not to say that you are all of a sudden the world because you made a mistake, but but there is a um, there is this con this context of you want to stand for what is right yep. in the Christian world, right? And so it's like, how do I have that conversation with you when I see you? Hey, Chris, how are you doing? Doing great, man. So now I got to skirt around the topic. So how's the new job? It's great. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, so, so Sarah's well, not and, wearing her ring. You know what I mean? Like, and, yeah. and I would actually come at it where there's people that really shouldn't be having conversations with people if you don't have a relationship with them. There's people that act like they have a relationship with someone whenever they're going mm. through something when in reality you don't. So like, like stop. Okay, stop but I have another wrench for that. I have another sure, sure, wrench so, for that. So what I mean somebody, by is a certain if, level. If student, like if people came right. up to me and asked mm -hmm. me like, hey, are you okay? What right. happened? Yeah. Right. I would have been glad like, mm -hmm. to share the story. Yep. Like, Yep. Thank you so much for for coming to me instead mm -hmm. of not coming to me. Right. And, but that the, the enemy right? will use that too because Correct. some of these people, what they might feel is, I don't have the relationship with this person. Mm -hmm. Sure. To mm -hmm. meet them in one of the hardest places of their lives. Sure. Mm -hmm. But I have that now. Like yeah. going through this now. Like I, it's it's 
like I look back and I'm so thankful. Even Alan said it then. He's like, dude, you're going to look back at this and mm -hmm. it's going to be like, just mm -hmm. you're going to get through it mm -hmm. like you are. And in that moment, I'm like, dude, you're crazy. There's mm -hmm. absolutely no way. Right. But now looking back, like I get to utilize this. So now mm -hmm. when I see somebody mm -hmm. hurting, mm -hmm. my first thought is, okay, what do they need? Mm -hmm. If I don't have that relationship with them, mm -hmm. at, you try to at build least, it. Maybe. No, no. Mm -hmm. I just I kind of stand back mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that they have the friendship mm -hmm. around them to mm -hmm. support them. Mm -hmm. And I let them do that. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no, I'm not looking at them on judgment now. Mm -hmm. I'm not, man, that sucks. And it sucks that they're going through it. They have friends around them. Great. Done. And that, and I think that takes maturity, but I also, I think that that's something else that, you know, I have to give the Christians the benefit of the doubt. It's like you constantly feel this expectation, like you got to serve people's needs all the time. And if you see somebody hurting, you know, if, and you're not mature in the faith to understand, like discern, like does this people, does this person have the right people? Sure. You might feel this obligation to sure. be like, sure. Hey, man, uh, what do you need? So Can that's I what I would, I would you know actually I mean? like, call it time. So, so like, like yes. for me, like the reality of like, so Chris and I, I didn't just have a on a, on again, off again relationship with Chris. Like he, he was literally one of my best friends in the school and still is to this day, one of my best friends. Thank you. And so like, like in throughout this shop, um, cool. woo, finally you well, heard I that. I was waiting for that. All right, you're welcome. <laughs> um, and yeah. shut up. Uh, so one of my best friends. And so I had not just rapport, but I had a bank account of relationship, of laughter, of joy, of tears, of laughter, like, like prior. Yeah. So whenever he hit rock bottom, when I had to speak direct truth to him, because he, I remember you saying multiple times, like, I just need to text her right now. I'm just going to show up at her house. And I, I looked at him and be like, you're being a moron. Yep. She asked for space. Yep. And then you tell me, hey, I texted her today. I'm like, why? Yeah. You're like, well, I just, and idiot. the thing is like, I idiot, idiot. idiot. So, idiot. Uh, we don't know what it is. Idiot. Uh, yeah. idiot. And, and because idiot. I remember you telling me, T tell me not to. I yep. need to give her space. I yep. need to give her space. So I had the, I had the access because number one, I had it prior, and then you continued to give me access to your life. Right. Now, that doesn't mean that a random stranger couldn't have that access to you. But in reality, if, if I just know you kind of, if I just know Chris a little bit, and I want to just come up to you and say how wrong you were, or how you shouldn't be texting her, or you shouldn't go and have a conversation, or like, you know, these little different conversations. In reality, like, I'm gonna miss it because I need to have a rapport. I need to have a relationship with you. Yep. Or I need to understand that Holy Spirit, if I just just the other day I had a very real conversation with someone I haven't had a relationship with in a while. Mm. And I and I told him this. I was like, look, man, I love you so much, I'm willing to tell you the truth. And I rather have a wound from a friend than a kiss from an enemy. Mm -hmm. And if I was once your friend, will you hear what I have to say to you? Yep. And he allowed me to speak very, very, like very, very direct stuff to him. And I don't believe anyone could have just had that conversation. Yep. Let me ask you a question. How do you, but and let me ask you this because I just honestly feel like this is the best case scenario, okay? Instantly, you knew you did something wrong. You've realized that you wanted to do anything it required to get back to where you needed to be. You had the right friends around you. you as painful as it was. Sure. Right? It was a painful. You had a mentor. Yep. Like, yeah, I mean, you had. Well, again, I was seeking out. You had right. a lot he, going he, for he you. He and, actually, well, no, no, no. In your heart, but no, let me say this. Sure. Your heart, and, if you're, and not everybody's heart is like this. Sure. Your heart wanted Jesus. Yes. One at Jesus. Not the discomfort to go away as soon as possible. Correct. Not, how do I get Sarah back as soon as possible? I, mean, I don't sure care if I change. I mean, sure, there were thoughts. I, I mean, I mean, he, yeah, yeah, thoughts yeah. Thoughts yeah, were real. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thoughts were very real. I no, mean, no, no, no. And I'm not saying you didn't want Sarah back. What I'm sure. saying is there was a part of you that wanted to become the person that God wanted you to be for Sarah, not just get Sarah. Yes and no. Okay. Talk to me. It was that I wanted to be the better person for my wife, whether that was Sarah or not. Okay, and I, and I believe that because you, um, you yeah. letting her go for that year, lets me know. 
that you you let go for him, not yeah. for Sarah, yeah. right? Because there was very well a chan chance that you wouldn't have had Sarah well, at the right. end of that year, That's right? That's what I'm saying. It wasn't even a year. Like it was that was a forever thing. It was like, all right, Lord, I might pass her every now and then, right. but I'm going to be human. I'll say hi to her, but that's it. But the bottom line is you had, you know, the Psalms say, uh, give me a loyal heart, a heart to, towards you, Lord, right? Like, give me, give me again a loyal heart. Right? And I feel like this was a process for you where you were like, you were not just trying to fix a problem. Yes. You were trying to regain a loyal heart towards Correct. the Lord. Right? That's a, like a David's heart. Like, and and so my question is this, Lord. and I'm going to ask you guys this question. And you were you went through it. I'm gonna ask you, Joey. How do you remain friends or walk a process through with a person who you don't see wanting to have a loyal heart with God after an, after a problem like that? That's a good question. Um, I'm sure you've probably had already examples. I, that... I think uh, if if that person was being honest, I think there's a deeper issue, deeper rooted issue. Mm -hmm before that's not their heart it's that they're trying to cover up what they truly want and they don't even know it like as like it just it the the psyche the human <laughs> psyche can just mm -hmm. right i say human psyche the enemy whatever you want to call it depending on your situation because everybody's different that was the one thing that i was always told to alan just he pushed me he was like listen i can give you the best sound advice mm -hmm. and you can go find a person that went through a similar situation but you're the only person who is going through your situation. Mm -hmm. You're the only you. Yep, 100%. And I remember going through this, and years later, I'm I'm sitting down with people that are going through similar, mm -hmm. and, and, and that was the first thing I told them, listen, we have similar stories, but mine's not going to be the same as yours. Right, mm -hmm. 100%. Just because Sarah and I ended up together doesn't mean that you and this person are going to end up together. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Because like both of you, Sarah had to go down her own healing process, yes. which I remember hugging and praying and many times with that with Sarah, like yes. with the girls in the ministry school, like us praying over them. And like, I remember that because that wasn't a, but that, that's a whole nother side of the story. But that, like, again, that yeah. that's gr a great example of like, even in marriage, mm -hmm. you have to do that with your wives. Like there are so many times when, when she comes up and she tells me something and, and I, it's, you know those moments where it's either, okay, I need to hug my spouse and mm -hmm. love her and just comfort her. But there are also moments of she needs a hug and to be comforted, but she needs to go either talk with friends mm -hmm. or she needs to go have a conversation with God 100%. because I cannot fix what she needs mm -hmm. to go through. I can make her feel good and I can make her feel better, but it's not going to help her get through what she needs to get through. Sure. And I remember there were so many times where I'm like, Hey, it's good to see you. I have to leave. I have to go right now because I need to, you know, like because whether I'm having thoughts or I just need to leave you alone or it was just, it was short conversations. Hey, good to see you. Walk away. That's the most I, random. I, I remember the first time you talked to her after like two, three months. I remember that you texted me like it was a venue. You guys like randomly encountered each other. Remember you both texted oh, me, I'm yes. pretty sure. Wow. I yes, believe yes. you both encountered me. It was so awkward because we were leaving mm -hmm. and um I didn't know what to do. Because mm -hmm. before, like, like she's almost your wife. So, right, like mm -hmm. you guys have kissed, you've hugged, mm -hmm. you've held hands, right? Like now you're not together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So I remember leaving that <laughs> night. Like, and I'm like, No, this is hilarious. Said, you don't understand how said, funny hey, this is. It was so good to talk with you. Oh yeah, you too, right? All right, good to see you. <laughs> no, this this gets so Awkward, much better, bro. She this, looked at my give me high hand. Five. Forget, gives you a high five, and she just stared at me and stared at my hand like, I can't believe you just did that. And I didn't know what to do, and I just turned around and walked away. And not just that, Sarah hates high fives to this day. Oh, hates really? high fives. So, <laughs> so when you really want to bug her, I just go, just give her hey, a high five, babe. <laughs> but like to this day, right? And so, um. <laughs> so she freaking calls me after that, if I remember correctly. Because again, I have a close relationship with Chris. So she's like calling me and her. She'll call me and be like, so how's Chris doing? Like, how, like, is he okay? Because she's worried about him too. Like, how is he emotionally? How is he spiritually? Is he focusing on God? Is he focusing on things? Oh yeah, that, I was a freaking middleman. That's convenient uh, that she's yeah. telling him yeah. what you need to know. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Not and, vice versa. But no, but then I'm saying, shut up, I told you stuff too. Because you'd ask me, you'd be like, so how's Sarah? Is she okay? So and I'm like, she's fine. I just talked to her on the phone. Wait, no, I didn't. I didn't talk to her on the phone. <laughs> so good. But I remember that getting called and she'd be like, she'd be like, 
Chris gave me a high five. And I was like, okay. Good. So so now that um so now that you've gone through like the process of redemption here as we lend it, um why how can how can the church do better and how can like fr like friends in the church do better uh for a process like that? Yeah, I think it's uh the big thing that comes to my mind is time. Right? Like everybody has their their own life their own things to do every single day, right? You're waking up, you, you got the kids. If you don't have kids and you're not married, you're going to school, you're writing papers, you're doing tests, you're doing exams, you're going to work, you work do jobs, right? You have life. Life is going on. When a friend, right, you said falls, right? When a friend makes a mistake, when they need somebody, it's inconvenient because you need extra time so sorry, I wish I could be there for you, but I have blank. I have to go do blank, right? It and only gets harder too. Right. Like your plate you only acquire more responsibilities. only gets more full. And so mm. as, as like right now I've learned, like I need to create margin in my day for that just in case. Mm. So whether I'm filling it with a book right now or that's <laughs> a joke, I don't really read right now except for the Bible. Um, <laughs> But whatever it might be, right, you're creating margin in your life for the inconvenience, right? So whether it's family, right? Like we have a lot of family mm -hmm. stuff going on mm -hmm. and it's very inconvenient, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that we're not going to be there for the family. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I could just say, hey guys, you know what? Figure it out. I'm sure you got some other people around you, but we're the people that are supposed to be around them mm -hmm. and I have to make the time. And so as the church and as friends, like that's a, most people, they, it's too inconvenient for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, yeah. And I think there's twofold on it too. Like, like I wasn't really able to answer your question that you asked earlier. Um, like when someone like doesn't and isn't focused on Jesus. Um, and I think you combat it in the way of like what the word says, you know, you first go one-on-one -on -one, and then if they won't hear it, then you bring another. Um, and then if they don't hear it, you bring it to leaders. And then if they won't hear it from leaders, you let them be. Yeah. Okay. If you want to, if you want to continue in the way that you're living, then you get to decide to continue on your way of living. I love you. I'm for you. But I pray that as you know, the world has its way with you, that you would, that you would see God and, and repent and turn and they're back gonna to come the back. Lord. Like, like, and I mean, I have friends that haven't, but I have friends that have. Right. And, and that relationship does change forever. It does. 100%. And, and as does even in our relationship, our relationship changed even in your longing to grow and change and to not ever have to walk through that again. Yeah. Um, and wanting to focus on Jesus, our relationship changed. Yep. And so um, it takes humility on both sides. I really, really deeply believe that. Like, I believe the church needs to realize the inconvenience of watching and walking someone through healing. Like, it's it's a physical therapist aspect like a physical therapist when you are a broken leg that physical therapist can't get ticked off at you that you still can't put weight on your leg Yep. why can't you stick up with your weight on your leg it's been a month now yep when it's like well, why are you still crying over her chris yep it's been a month now it's like wait a minute like yeah it's been a month my leg has still not healed properly yep. i'm still trying to grow stronger in this area you know and that that to me is like it takes time and like the church just needs to realize like time doesn't heal all wounds yep it doesn't correct process of the wound heals it yep. that's it like that's that's time can make wounds worse if it's not being healed properly and so um i think regarding like the church and friends and yeah. accountability partners that i've watched pain is i believe it takes both i could long for you to be better but if you don't want to be better there's only so much yeah. that i can be yep. and you may want to be better and me as the person on the outside may want to be like nah i'm done Yep. I believe both sides, just like in a marriage, just like in any relationship, it takes both sides yeah. to say, let's have grace and let's have truth. Yep. That when I would speak truth, you would have to be humble enough to walk in the fact of, I should, I probably need to hear that yep. or I need to move. But I also need to move in grace enough to be like, wait a minute, Chris might be still struggling with some things and he might not have this perfectly yep. to be able to walk in grace from this side. And so 
Number one, both. You need Jesus on both sides. You need to have a hungry heart for the Lord for both sides. You both have to be selfless on both sides. Like, yeah, it's just, and understand that like, you're gonna make mistakes on the on the fault, on the failed side, quote unquote, you fail. And then the person that is trying to walk through in compassion and walk through the healing process with them is gonna fail. Because there's many yeah. times through that process, I felt like I failed you in time because I'm still in ministry school and you're not. Yep. I'm still in this thing called 24 seven and you're not. And I'm like, there are times I'd be like, Chris knows how busy this thing is. And like, like, man, like, how can I spend time with him? Like, yep. how can I do anything? Like, how can I get him around? And like, I remember that. I remember feeling guilty in that. I remember like, not sure how to connect with you during that time. Yeah. And, but that's yeah. the biggest thing. Like yeah. for someone who's going through anything, mm -hmm. some of the biggest parts of it is just, I just want somebody yeah. with me. Yep. I don't want to do this alone. Yep. Right. It just, it, it can get lonely. And so just having somebody else in a room, mm -hmm is so important. Yeah. So I was actually, while I'm sitting here, it's it's funny. So to this day um, is when Sarah and I had a um, a conversation and it was uh, during a serve week. Mm -hmm. And um, we were helping, I was helping, right? We didn't communicate that we were gonna do this together, mm -hmm. um, but we were helping serve for our local church at the time they were doing this big event mm -hmm. and uh, she just so happened to be serving mm -hmm. with uh, with Roman's mm -hmm. uh, girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was with Roman, mm -hmm. right? We're walking and we're gonna do serving this together. Yep. And then he's like, oh, I gotta, I just gotta go talk to my girlfriend real quick. I'll be, I'm gonna go over there. And I'm like looking over there and look, there's Sarah right next to doing this serving thing together. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, cool, go do that. I'll see you in a little bit. He's like, you're not gonna go over? I'm like, well, Sarah's, Sarah's over there's like, come on, you just got to, you, you have to say hi. You can't just mm -hmm. ignore, right? And uh, so I went over and said hi. And that started like an hour and a half to our mm -hmm. conversation where we just ended up serving together mm -hmm. um, for an Easter event. Mm -hmm. And that's where it started, like mm -hmm. a year, year and a half later. Liquid Ranch Fields, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. Was it there? I think it was, I think it was at the church fields. That one was? I think yeah. it was at the church fields. <laughs> yeah, that's um, cool, man. Yeah. It's a wild man. Like, like again, that's the accountability and falling and stumbling and like, like that's just like life and yeah, uh, yeah. Friends, but man. now, yeah. now you look at right. You look at some people that we've gone to college with mm -hmm. that have they're they've gone through things mm -hmm. or they're going through things currently, mm -hmm. and um, like it sucks. Mm -hmm. It sucks to see that happen, and mm -hmm. and you don't want that to happen for anybody, right. and um. I've had those thoughts where it's like, okay, what do, am I supposed to do something? Mm -hmm. Right. Do, what, what do I need to do? Is there something that I can do to be there for that person? Like, is it, is it my responsibility? Yes. As a Christian, I think you're supposed to love people and just let them know, Hey, right. love you. Love you, bro. Love, love you, girl. High five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and so that's what I did. Like I, I, you have to let people go through what they need to go through and just let them know that, Hey, thinking about you, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry you're going through what you're going yeah. through. hundred percent. Um, and not a, oh my gosh, did you hear what they're going through? Mm -hmm. I right. can't believe that happened mm -hmm. to them. Like, right. and, um, it's not the mindset. Mm -hmm. And, um, I hope some, mm -hmm. I hope I re that was my biggest mm -hmm. thought through this is like, I hope that they're on the other side going, mm -hmm. I hope people aren't thinking of this mm -hmm. of me. Like, right. I hope they know that we are here going, we think about them yeah. and we pray for them. And I'm, I'm actually praying for you in a good way. And yeah. I, and I learned particularly, cause again, I've, I've walked through this a few times with a couple different friends and uh, even students and things like that is like some of the stuff that I learned, even in my own pride, being on this side was um, particularly when you were going through your stuff, I was dealing with stuff with the Lord. If I was like, cause again, it rewinds of like, what did I miss? How did I do this? Da, yeah. da, 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 the shame of like the accountability part. And the, what the thing the Lord constantly reminded me of was I am not your savior. And so like, even if I try to put myself into the savior shoes, Please. like, Hey Chris, how you doing? Hey, I'm praying for you. I'm really right here. Hey, Hey, I'm right. And I would, I would end up trying to fill the gap that in reality, only Jesus and Holy spirit, the comforter yeah, could fill. Good. And so sometimes I would feel an over obligation to love someone and to be in their present, get them around me and be here. But when in reality, like, dude, you got to go walk with that with the Lord. Yep. Not that I'm 
zoning you out or I'm isolating you. Like, yep. hey, Chris, like, I love you. I'm here for you. But I remember yes. telling you that, like, bro, you need to, you need to go to that event yeah. without me. Yeah. Hey, you need to go to the service. I can't be there. Yep. Hey, you need to go there with Alan. I'd love to be there. Hey, yep. I'll be there. Like, I remember those moments of just like allowing, because for the beginning, I tried to be at everything. Yep. I remember I tried to be, I tried to be the savior. Yep. I tried to be the man in the cape for the people that are hurting. And I realized again, and again, and again, like, you're not I'm, their Holy I'm, Spirit. I'm not Holy Spirit and I'm not your savior. Yeah. And so like, there's sometimes that like, sometimes the crap, whenever people get them into it, sometimes they got to walk through it. 100%. Not, not alone, 100%. but like. There's some things you might not have the answers for. And yeah. we have to humble ourselves to get into the fact to be like, oh yeah, I am I not Holy Spirit. Yeah. Like I yeah. have the Holy Spirit, but yeah. I am not their Holy Spirit. Yes. Oh, I have the Holy Spirit in me and I can have spiritual wisdom and I can give prophecy and words of wisdom and words of knowledge. But in reality, I don't want them relying on Joey's words ever. I don't want them to say, well, Joey said. No, I want them to say, Holy Spirit said. Yep. And that my relationship with the Lord, the Word said, and like dug into that. And that's, yep. those are the triggers that like, particularly when I walk, I've walked through this sadly, like a, a, a good bit with some people that I'm like, I would, I tend to always try to put my shoes, my, my feet into those shoes of superhero Yep. of like, okay, sure. okay, God, give me the right words to speak to them. And I, and I'm like every day be in it, which like, like in a, in a superhero, com, what's a word, not complacent, but like a placement of that instead of a like, Hey Lord, give me the words if I need to have the conversation right yep. now. But it was like, Oh, if I don't speak to them, they're not going to hear Holy Spirit. Yeah. Like there's a big difference of yep. like, oh wait, someone else could be speak like you making the statement of like, Lord, if they have friends, Father, use them. Like that was a whole shift for me. Yep. Like where I had friends, I'm like, all right, God, I might not have the rapport with them like I used to. Lord, will you bring the right people in their lives? Yeah. Will you bring the right people to speak? Yeah. And on top of that, will you interrupt them with dreams? Will you interrupt 100%. them in their reading time? Like all these moments, you know? Yep. And so Yeah, yep. man. So just just thank you. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for yep. being raw. Do you have anything else to share? No, I, I think through that. Um, one of the things that I learned, cause when you mentioned that, that was one of the biggest things that I would go to Alan about like every day I would just have questions and I wanted mm -hmm. him to give me the answers. Mm -hmm. Like I need, I want answers now yeah, and I need you, yeah. right? That's like, yeah, the give me the medium. Nature, like give me the medium. I need now. I need it. I yeah. need your, you need to give me the answer of what I need to do. Because you're the Holy spirit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you have a direct line. <laughs> and I remember him, the first thing that would come out of his mouth. Have you talked to God about that yet? Yeah. Did you pray about that yet? Mm -hmm. Have you had that conversation? Because if you haven't, go do that first, right? And then the comeback, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And yeah. so um, that was huge. That was one of the biggest things that I took away from him, which I tell people now, like, have you prayed about it yet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you actually talked to the one? Yeah. And half the time we, if we be honest, half the time we just want a, a man's conversation because it's quick. Yes. We want a microwave. And again, can Holy Spirit move through a person? Absolutely. Can the Holy Spirit give a word of wisdom from someone that knows nothing of your situation? Yes. But again, dude, women, men, the Holy Spirit resides in you. Yep. Go have a conversation with the living God. Go present your request to the Lord. Like, go be in a secret place. Half the time we're afraid to be alone yep. in secret place because we're afraid what's going to come through our minds and what's our soul. Like, how's our emotions? We're afraid to slow down. Like, slow down, people. Slow down. And have the relationship with the Lord, and yeah, so 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 much to that. But anything else? Anything else that you no, would? No, let's end it. And end it. This is good. All well, right. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll talk more about some yeah, other things. Yeah, we'll talk some more another, another time. One. But well, hey, prolific podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. So excited, so honored. He's going to go to the music now. He's going to press the button that we can't hear. But hey, we love you guys. Truly, truly, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Pleasure. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you. Thank you for just being. Awesome. We're blessed, man, to know you and excited to see what the Lord has in store. Right. Yeah, see you, see you in uh, see five you minutes. In All right, yeah, see you in five <laughs> minutes. We love you for a living podcast. Go be fruitful. Deuces. Deuces.